Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, box that I designed for a friend of mine, Sandy, who is a candle maker. She um, has an online shop, Candle Sense, and she makes the most divine candles in the world ever. Uh, this is one called Raspberry, and this is her infamous bean pot, and I love it. But, as you can see, it's got a lid. Now, she wanted me to design a box for her that would hold a particular size candle. Um, and this is what I came up with and it's perfect really because I didn't want it to be enclosed because I wanted her customers and people at you know craft fairs and exhibitions to be able to see her candle but also actually to be able to smell it as well because those beautiful scented candles if you can't smell them then you don't really know what you're getting so I loved this and uh, this is what I came up with now this is um, a size that I made but I'm actually now going to make the bespoke size for her benefit but it is quite easy to make them in various different sizes. Now this is a piece of A4 cardstock and it measures uh, 9 and 2 eighths by 7 and 6 eighths so basically all I've done is I've lost a tiny little bit off the bottom and a bit off the length. Now with the uh, side that measures 9 and 2 eighths across the top um, there's four score lines at uh, two and two eighths, two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters, and again at nine. And then turning it just once, it doesn't matter left or right, two and a quarter, five and one eighth, and seven and three eighths. So I'm going to quickly lose the scoring tool so I don't need that any longer. And we're left with, hopefully you can see this, um, a small panel at the top and a small panel at one side. That is the top, this small section here, because this is where we're going to put the hole punches and it's going to close in this, sorry, close in this way. And this small panel on the side is the side tab. There's a, a couple of little snips that we need to make but I want to do the folding first. I find it easier to cut after. So very quickly, fold and burnish the creases. Um, burnishing the creases is, is basically where you're using a bowl, bone folder to make them super, super sharp. Um, and this, this small one here, it goes back in the opposite way to the others because we want that, to make that quite a defined edge. And then folding over the sides and again pushing down on these fold lines, on these score lines. This is this is really um, this is whisper white card stock, and for a white card stock, this is remarkably strong often white card that you get because there's no dye running through it, it's a bit flimsy and a bit wibbly, but this isn't. So there we go, that's all the creasing done. We need to nick off this tiny little bit of, on the side here. So we've got our, our thin score lines and creases at the top and the thin on the right and we just want to take that bottom section off so with a big pair of scissors take that off put it to one side and then cut up this one line here that goes up to the first horizontal score line and the same for just just for those three score lines. That's the scissors and those out of the way. So what that's going to do is create the bottom. Now obviously Sandy's going to put a candle in here so it's good that she's got four layers of cardstock in there that is going to help it all close together. Um, so let's put some designer series paper on. Now if we want to find out which bit's going to be our front. And oh look there's a score line I didn't fold over. <laughs> Whoops. Quickly do that. There we go. So this section here where our adhesive is going to be is the back. So that therefore means that is the front and that's where I want to put my designer series paper on this section. And this measures, this is from um, Sunshine and Sprinkles, but I like this lovely green. So I'm going to put this on the on the front here and it measures two inches by two and five eighths of an inch. So just on there. And obviously the top as well, and this measures two by two. 
and again just into that panel there. Now you're probably all wanting to know how to put holes in all the way round but without having to use a die cutter or framelits. It isn't as hard or as complicated as it looks. What you need first is an already punched out template and you line that up where you want to your hole to be. So that's about centre and with a post-it note to hold it in place take your corresponding punch and punch through the lot. Oops. If I can get that in. So you punch over the punch template and it just pops out. And then you then fold this one over and because these are all the same width we're now going to use this as our hole, as our template. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to angle this so I can see what I'm doing. And punch through. Oh, I haven't lined that up properly. I'm going to have to put weight on it slightly. So two windows. And then the same, we'll come back to our template to do this side here. And again with a post-it note, just lining it up. It's pretty much central. What's the sticky side? I don't know which side's my sticky. There we go. That's not the sticky side. There it is. Oh, post-it notes don't want to play the game today. There we go. And again, line it up just the same as before. And I'm sorry, I'm going to angle this one so I can see. Pop it out. Fold it over. Look through. And pop it out. And there we go. That is how you create windows all the way around but without having to use a die cut or a framelit I should say. So I'm going to put some adhesive down here. I would suggest a stronger adhesive than this normally but for video sakes I just want it to be uh, nice and quick and again because they're all the same size you don't need to be holding it up in the air. Fold over and push down. These bottom ones we know this is the front, so that's going to be closed last. So I just want to have a bit of adhesive to fold that one over and close. A bit more here, fold over and close. And then finally on here, fold over and close. And then to make sure it's all carefully pushed down, just the bone folder. You could use the back of a pair of scissors or something like that. And that is it for that part. To make the, the top, to make it close, all you do is you push your sides, push the sides in with your forefingers at the same time, <clears throat> at the same time as, as closing with your uh, thumbs and middle fingers and it will naturally, happily go like this. This is how it will, will fold together. I'm sorry, that's my office door's just creaked open as my cat has come in to say hello. So there we go. So if you want to put some adhesive on, this is the time you would do it. I would definitely use sticky strip. I'm not for the moment. I'm just going to use um, a couple of binder clips, my ever faithfuls. Always useful. Please always have them in your craft rooms. Two of those, just on the sides, because I want to punch some holes in. So you can see the shape that it's naturally formed and made. A hole punch. You need to line it up. I can see here because I've got a window that's just in front of me, but I can see daylight peeping through here. So I know that I've got a big layer to punch through because I wanted to get all of the, the folds and sections in. And if I open it up for you now, you can see that I've managed to go through all of the bits. 
all of the layers I should say. So I'm just going to quickly close that up again for a second while I pop my ribbon on. So just some, this is Whisper White Organza. Very pretty ribbon. And just, I think it just needs a knot. Doesn't need much more than that. And of course, if Sandy wanted to put a, you know, her label on, she could punch, you know, punch out a corresponding um, oval and a, a scalloped oval and something like that, hang it on with labels. You could put a price label on there, you could put a, a gift tag, anything you wanted. Snip off those edges. And that, I've got a little hole punch that's gone inside. That is my box that I designed. Uh, for my friend, it's very easy to recreate. The measurements, all you need to do is measure the height of the of whatever it is you want to go in it and measure the diameter. And therefore, when you're going round the side, you need the diameter obviously to be the same and you need the height to only be once. Um, and it's quite simple and it's lovely and anything could go in there. You could put uh, some acetate sheets in there in this section so before you sealed it up and then you could put sweets and stuff inside and they're not going to fall out um, you could put cupcakes in there all sorts anything so thank you very much for watching i hope you found it easy enough i'll put all of the measurements and details on my blog and i hope to hear from you soon bye